middle school teachers here knew that this was the type of program that they wanted to adopt. And so they asked if they could go right into the program for a year. What do you want to learn more about that compared to other ones? Do other ones? I was one of the teachers that was involved in implementing um, and picking the new science curriculum. There's one thing that we could add, but we're not sure about it. Like, and what's that? Um, Mount, because we have like an earthquake legend. Mm -hmm. and a we were going to pilot a couple of different programs, and the younger grades did that. But we unanimously, the committee, five of us, picked It's About Time, so we were able to start immediately with that program. We were really focusing on trying to find an inquiry-based program. Um, and this is the first one that we saw was truly inquiry. Three, two, one, and start timer. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. And stop. It's been a great program because it is definitely hands-on. It is a little different though in that it goes a little deeper with the concepts. It goes deeper in the requirements for students to really master and then demonstrate their knowledge of the science concepts. It's really neat to see the kids get excited about science. Oh, you're, you've been looking ahead, huh? I feel like they're talking about science. I think when I first started teaching, I felt like I was using the book and the book was doing the teaching and the, I was just giving the kids the facts. And now I feel like the kids are actually talking about science, working like really like how I did when I was a scientist, doing collaboration, analyzing data, not just going problem, hypothesis, explanation, conclusion, because that's not how science works. It's much more alive than that. There we got it. <laughs> I can do a quick walk around in the room and I know pretty quickly whether the kids are getting it or they're not getting it and what they're not getting. And I can t work with them individually while the other kids can keep going. Yeah, got it? You answered your own question. The program itself really works well with both the high-end kids, the lower kids, and the middle-aged kids. The lower kids, the kids who maybe struggle because it's a lot of a partner or group work, they develop confidence. They share their ideas first with their partner, then maybe with their group, and then when it's time for a whole class discussion, they're feeling very confident. The higher-end kids have great questions, questions I never got before. And why are there so many volcanoes in like, like Asia? They're pushing it. They're, it's opening up a lot of doors to them. They're thinking beyond what they would have thought of before. They are expected every day to either explain orally or explain in writing, demonstrate um, through a number of different ways. Students do presentations in class all the time. Our region is Mount Kilimanjaro. It is located three, three degrees south latitude and you see their, their nervousness about getting up in front of a, a group of people and explaining what they're thinking is absolutely eliminated. Many of the volcanoes in the Great African Rift Valley have erupted as recently as 1996. Any questions? It's given all the 21st century skills. We're working with the working together, presenting yourself intelligently, and whether you're afraid or not, you're up there sharing. Mount Everest is located in the Namche Bazaar in Nepal. Their writing is amazing, the literacy. They write their claim, they support it with evidence and science knowledge using a scientific voice. They are writing like scientists with the use of the vocabulary words and the understanding of what that means and the connections is tremendous. They know we're not going to give them the answers. <laughs> They're constantly having to answer their own questions. So that type of thinking for them is huge. That excitement about learning and them asking the questions, why? Oh, I know why. we got to try this. They're starting to think like scientists instead of, OK, here's your problem, I'm giving you the answer, and let's move on. Their own thinking has changed. Let's decrease by 12 to 125. All right, that's up to your group. You guys are up, you guys up for 125? So the whole idea that it's coming from them and wanting to learn and how they want to do that, that's really what's engaging them. Oh, Ms. Lumberger, I want to do propeller system. I'm going to add two um, rubber bands this time. Great. What's another independent variable are we going to test? Wheels. Okay, so what kind of wheels are you testing? So I think it allows the students the opportunity to ask questions, investigate it, and then reflect on it and learn. It's a different style of learning. It's a lot of classroom management, but once it gets up and running, the classroom management issue is gone. Um, the kids know exactly what is expected of them and they work much more independently.
All right, keep going, guys. I think they've become better at looking at the world and recognizing what their impact is on it. 2.8. They don't just sit back and look. When we finished up our last unit on air quality, they were looking at different cities and, and making recommendations on what we can do to improve it. And these kids came up with lots of great ideas. And I think realizing that they can make a difference and maybe this is something they might want to go into. They can make the difference in the world. I mean, what's more important than that?